Hi everyone, I'm Danny. Welcome to my channel. Today we will talk about Alumnia orchids and some tips for keeping them healthy and thriving in your home. Yep, I didn't say anything about greenhouses, so this means this orchid is well suited for normal home conditions. And in case you didn't notice, they are some of the tiniest orchids around, which means you can always find some space for them around you. Did I mention they have amazingly colored flowers? Well, these beauties are actually pretty easy to care for, and I think anyone can keep them happy with a few basic care tips. So let's begin. I'll start by saying that these orchids are nothing like any other usual houseplant you might have grown until now. If you are acquainted with Phalaenopsis orchids though, things will be easier. These plants are epiphytic, this means they don't naturally grow in soils. They attach themselves to trees and branches with the help of their roots. For this reason, they don't like to be treated like regular house plants and planted in all-purpose soils. So never pot your Tolumnia orchid in regular soil. If you know this bit of information about them, things will get much easier from now on. So let us start with potting media and the way we can grow them. As I mentioned, these orchids are epiphytic. This means they like to have a lot of ventilation around their roots, rather than being suffocated by a very fine and wet soil. There are various ways to grow them actually, and they can do good in many styles or potting methods. For this reason, I find them to be quite versatile. Most often though, you will find them for sale in ceramic or plastic pots with bark medium. Bark is a widely used media for epiphytic orchids because it consists of bark chunks that retain some water but not as much as regular soils. Due to their size, they create air pockets so the roots always have air around them and also the bark chunks do not stay wet for too many days. Bark media is well suited for normal home environments and for orchid beginners. I actually find it to be one of the safest medias for orchids you can use. Sometimes you can find Tolumnia orchids potted in sphagnum moss. Now this is a finer, more water retentive medium that can work with these orchids as well, but there is a bit of a catch. Due to its fine nature, you need to know how to work with it properly so you don't end up suffocating the roots. I have a more extensive video on sphagnum moss, so if you'd like to learn more, click on the info card on the screen right now. Moss medium is better suited for drier environments, as it retains more water than bark, but for an orchid beginner, it can prove tricky to use. But we will talk about it more when we get to the watering part. If you buy your Tolumnias from orchid nurseries, you might also find them mounted on a piece of wood or cork bark. This is actually closer to how they would grow in nature, so by all means they can grow like this. However, I don't find this way of growth suited for all homes and lifestyles. Being that the roots benefit from a lot of air, they will also require very frequent watering. And if you cannot provide this, your orchid will suffer from dehydration. A normal home might have low humidity, which can make the wood dry even faster. If you are an absolute beginner with orchids, maybe this way of growth is not for you just yet. Wait until you learn more and then experiment. There might be other materials in which you can find tolumnias, like coconut husk, charcoal or ceramic pebbles. All these media have different properties, so the way to choose the right media for you is by knowing what these orchids like. So let's talk about a very important aspect that can determine if your orchid will be healthy or not, and this is watering. As a general rule, these orchids don't like to stay soggy wet for long periods of time, but rather dry out slightly in between waterings. They prefer low mineral content water, but you can use tap water if it's not hard water and the pH is not higher than 7.5. This is actually what I use. If your tap water has a very high mineral content, you can mix it with distilled or osmosis water. Or you can use distilled water or rain water. Keep in mind that no mineral content at all is detrimental as well. So it's important to fertilize regularly if you use rain water, distilled water or osmosis water and provide calcium and magnesium as a supplement if your fertilizer doesn't contain them. When watering your Tolumnia, be sure not to get water in the crown or in between the leaves. Tolumnias are pretty susceptible to crown rot, as I've experienced. Due to their shape, it's really not easy for water to evaporate. So try to water from below or remove excessive water with the help of a paper towel. The frequency of watering will depend on many things, including the type of media you use, your environment and the size of the orchid. I would say that you are safe to water whenever the medium is dry, and this can be every two days, three days, and so on. All you need to do is just observe your orchid. 
Tolumnia's in bark medium will generally need water more often than the ones potted in sphagnum moss. Mounted Tolumnia orchids might need watering every day, or even twice a day. Also, the drier your environment, the faster the water will evaporate, so that will influence the frequency of watering as well, and vice versa. So as you can see, there is no once-a-week rule. Best thing to do is to observe your orchid and water it whenever the medium dries. If you water your Tolumnia orchid more frequent than you should, you risk suffocating or damaging the roots. Root rot is a common ailment of these orchids, so don't be too keen on keeping your orchids well watered. Don't wait too long before watering either, or your orchid will show signs of dehydration. It's easy to tell when you're procrastinating a bit too much. Look at the leaves of your Tolumnia. If they have fine wrinkles, you need to water your orchid as soon as possible. Speaking about potting, be sure that your Tolumnia is potted on top of the media. The base of its stem needs to be on top at all times, so never bury it or you will risk some serious rotting issues. If you look closely at the base of each fan, you will see that the leaves overlap each other. Water can get trapped there easily and can lead to stem rot. Better keep the whole plant dry and well above the wet medium. Regarding fertilizing, well, everyone has their own preferred schedule. If you don't have an opinion just yet, best thing to do is to buy an orchid fertilizer and just follow the instructions on the label. As I said, the lower the mineral content in your water, the more important it is to fertilize. The pot you choose for your Tolumnia needs to be quite small and appropriate for your plant size. You can grow them in clay pots, which have the benefit of being very airy, plastic pots or even tiny baskets, like I have. However, keep in mind that at this small size, things will dry out pretty fast. So maybe if you have a humid environment, you can go for the clay pots. Or if your environment is dry, maybe a plastic pot will be better. Even a combination of a basket and sphagnum moss works. But this is more of a personal choice that will develop in time. If you are still a beginner, you can just reuse the pot the orchid came with when you repot it. If it can hold the root system, you're good. Let's talk about temperature now. These orchids will enjoy the temperature you enjoy as well, as they are intermediate to warm growers. Normal home temperatures are well suited, as well as warmer temperatures. As a general rule, temperatures between 22 and 23 degrees Celsius and 27-28 degrees Celsius are appropriate for these orchids. They can withstand extremes, but try not to go lower than 16 degrees Celsius or higher than 32 degrees Celsius. Well, this one was easy. Humidity-wise, they really are not picky. You definitely don't need a greenhouse for them. An average humidity of 40% or higher is just great for most hybrids easily available on the market. There's one more catch about humidity. Because they are not tall plants, they benefit from the moisture and humidity in the close vicinity of the potting media, so I really wouldn't hassle with humidity trays. But if you already have a way of providing humidity setup, that's great. Just be sure to provide ventilation as well. Stale air can cause molds or rotting problems. Regarding light, well, these little guys do like to tan. They enjoy bright light and will generally grow better, faster, stronger and flower in bright light conditions. Don't fry your orchids in the hot sun though, that would damage almost any orchid. Reduce the intensity of the sun rays by using a sheer curtain. A very bright but sheltered place will do as well. I personally keep them all year round in a southeast window, sheltered with a sheer curtain, and they love it. When they receive adequate bright light, they will obtain a red hue on their leaves. This is normal, and that is actually what you should aim for. Some hybrids will redden up more, while others less. But if you get just the tiniest bit of red, you're on the right track with your Tulumnia orchid from the light level perspective. If you didn't notice by now, they have wonderful little flowers that can come in a wide range of colors and patterns. There is such a wide variety on the market that it's hard not to find at least one that you like. The blooms are displayed on a flower spike, pretty similar to an Oncidium orchid, and oftentimes the spike is much taller than the orchid itself. Unlike Oncidiums though, the spikes on these orchids can branch out after the initial flush of blooms, so if your Tolumnia is in good health, hang on to that flower spike and don't cut it, you might get another flush of blooms. Some hybrids or species can even create cakeys on the spikes, pretty similar to Phalaenopsis orchids. If the spike dries, you are safe to cut it. The orchid itself looks like a tiny bush of fleshy, narrow leaves. 
They don't grow pseudobulbs, although they are sympodial orchids. I think they resemble Paphiopetalum orchids in this regard, creating a new fan or rosette, however you want to call it, regularly. Each new rosette can produce flower spikes, but older ones can rebloom as well. As the orchid ages, the older rosettes will die off and this plant will regenerate, so it's not uncommon to see yellowing leaves on old growths. The size of the orchid can vary a bit, but generally they don't grow taller than 20 or 25 centimeters. Roots are very thin and when they emerge they are white, with green growing root tips. As they age they will green up when watered. New fans are produced every year. Although some sources suggest they bloom in springtime, it's not really the case. If the weather is warm and bright, they can actually bloom any time a new fan matures. In the past, the Lumia orchids were called equitant oncidiums and you can see the striking resemblance with the Oncidium flowers. However, they have very different looks plant-wise and are not very related. Care-wise, they are different as well. But the best part about Tulumnias is that they can be propagated from seed quite fast. Unlike other orchids, the average time a Tulumnia takes for reaching maturity from seed is about two years, which is fantastic for us orchid growers. This means more and more hybrids are available every year. This explains the wide variety and availability of these orchids, as orchids obtained from seeds can usually take even 7 years to mature. Because many Tulumnias are obtained from seed, there is a lot of variety as each seed is different from each other. Some of them that have particular features or very beautiful patterns are cloned still. And as an experiment, I will try to create some hybrids of my own next year. Keep in mind that some hybrids might be sterile, and also the process of growing orchids from seeds is pretty laborious, but that's a different discussion. Overall, I would say Tulumnia are great orchids even for beginners if you know a thing or two about them, and hopefully this video pointed you in the right direction. As for me, well, expect an abundance of Tulumnias in the future and diverse ways of growing them and displaying them. I am simply in love with these orchids and the fact that they are small means I can have even a hundred and still have space for other orchids. Oh, that was a joke, but I wouldn't be surprised if at some point I will gather a hundred Tulumnias. Okay, hope you enjoyed this video and it taught you something new. If you found it useful, give it a thumbs up and a share, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos and feel free to drop me a line in the comment section if you have further questions or suggestions for other videos. Also, consider supporting us by leaving a one-time or a monthly tip on orchidnature.com. While you are there, you can browse the identification and care pages or talk to our community in the forum section. Click on the right side of your screen if you're in the mood to learn how to care for Vanda orchids. Thank you for watching, I'll see you next time, bye!